what are the creative ambitions on the west side of the hills that can be realized here in Titan? And how can we use these empty warehouse spaces that we bought? And how can we hire the people who are so talented in this area? And how can we connect them with the greater creative world? We do it in a number of different ways, but the Mosaic project for Sound Transit has been by far the biggest. I also think it has the potential for really blowing up and becoming a, a very, very important industry for the entire town. It's a pretty incredible project. I don't think I've ever been approached with a project quite like this, where they just kind of say, hey, here's a blank canvas. We're going to do it in mosaic, but all you have to do is design it, because I actually don't have any experience creating mosaics. So it's pretty uh, exciting and unique in that way. My name is Kenji Hamai Stoll. I'm a muralist, public artist, tattoo apprentice, and I'm from Tacoma, Washington. What really gets the process going for me, it always starts on paper. As much research as I do and as much conceptualizing and things like that, I think the place that really gets my brain going is when I just sit down in front of a piece of paper and start drawing and start trying to visualize what it actually might look like. I remember thinking a lot about these Onigawara tiles, basically. They look like demons, though, I think in a Western context, demon doesn't really correctly describe it because it's not satanic or demonic necessarily. But there are these really cool, intense, kind of like ogre-like faces. They're called oni. They often adorn temples and shrines and things like that in Japan. And a lot of these tiles, a lot of these pieces are maybe like 700 years old. They were put on these temples when they first built them in like the 1300s. You have even stood the test of time through fires, you know, when there's wars and things like that. And these entire temples burn down, you know, because they're tiles, they end up surviving and they're able to be put back up. And so for me, that was another moment where I knew that this was the right direction for the piece. Kenji's piece was the first one of this contract, and so it was kind of all new for us. Originally, the Mosaic Studio was all 80 or 90% done by hand. There was a little bit of design that went into it, but even then, it might just be scanning something and printing it out larger. When Titan Mosaic started, we were really inspired by the New York subways and all of the platform signs, and those are all very typographic. Commissions in the past was all typographic, directional signage and city signage. So now with Kenji's piece, we've been going in much more of a illustrative direction with it. There's just an initial conversation about, you know, how do you build these mosaics? What's gonna work, what's not? Because having no experience in working with glass or doing them, it's really important for me to kind of understand what's feasible on their end. When you're just creating a digital image or a painting or something, you don't have to think about that as much, but we have a limited palette of colored glass that we can work with. I thought about it a lot like creating a woodblock print or a screen print where you have really sharp lines, you have really sharp borders between colors, and then you just create it in layers. And so the actual process initially started on paper, and then I brought it into the computer, and I worked on different color variations. And then I just literally created different layers on Photoshop. So in being the project manager for this, I had to make some calls when it came to Kenji's pieces because we couldn't always find the color that we liked or we couldn't lay something out quite the right way if the tiles were gonna be too small. A lot of the color that he used was this really bold reds and salmons and those kind of colors that are really hard to achieve with glass. So in order to create those, we had to put them in a kiln and fire them. So a lot of it was collaborative in that respect and, and there had to be kind of like a mutual trust to help me find the right color substitutions to, um, to still make that come through. The workflow for pre-production on the mosaics is we start with the drawing that's been submitted or a painting design. In Kenji's case, it was a Photoshop document and then create a trace of the entire image to cover what the artist has put in there. So every line that they've made, we will highlight in there. From then, we break it down farther so that it's made up of a bunch of smaller tiles. So we have to decide where every contour and line is gonna go in. And from there, we'll break those long contours and lines down into even smaller tiles. That's where the mosaic training comes and kind of meets the technological side. Once you kind of have all of the tiles laid out, you have to then offset it to create grout lines. That would happen naturally if you were doing it by hand. You would just place the tiles spaced a little bit apart, but drawing it on the computer to then cut out on a machine, you have to actually have 30,000 individual small polygons that will then be cut out as individual tiles. 
When I really started to understand the scale of this project, it became evident that we were going to have to buy some equipment. We would never be able to do the work by hand, so we invested in a very large and very expensive water jet. The water jet, how it operates, is it's a stream of water and sand traveling at 40,000 pounds per square inch, and that is able to pierce through the glass and then cut as it moves around. So it's similar in nature to a laser cutter, but a lot more powerful. We can cut through everything from glass to thick steel. So that has opened up a lot of doors for what we're able to do mosaic-wise. A lot of the things I thought about leaving with people with this piece was, one, just something fun and vibrant, but two, that things are not always maybe the way that you perceive them. You know, again, using Onigawara as the inspiration for the piece, they have these really intense facial expressions, which I think depending on who you ask, some people would say maybe that's a little scary and intense, and some people might say these are really fun and maybe they remind them as video games. Um, but I think walking that line and maybe has different reactions, but ultimately doesn't live in just one static place. I think all of us have our truths, but the universal truth, the thing that we all share is somewhere kind of in the middle of all those things. And so in a weird way, I think about this artwork as, as being a way to kind of express that and explore that and leave that, you know, in a place like Redmond where they are creating tools and technology that will really shape our futures.